collection. Hi, this is Robert Bortons with Classical Conversations, and I'm so excited to be here with one of our premier sponsors. Uh, I love it when businesses, universities, schools get involved in the homeschool movement. I'm excited about what this university can offer our students and how they're centered on God and just continuing that education that you as a homeschool parent have given for 12 years. You know, we don't like to see them, you know, you spent 12 years giving them a Christian education. You know, we want to see you continue to do that through college. And so really excited to have Will Brantley here. He's with Hannibal LaGrange University located in Hannibal, Missouri. And so maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your university and uh, just a little bit about your campus as well. Sure. Well, I'm excited to be here with you today. I appreciate the opportunity. So uh, like I said, I'm Will. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Management and Marketing. Uh, really what that means is a big fancy title that my job is to try to help recruit students here um, and lead the teams that do that. So um, Hannibal LaGrange is just, it's a special place. Uh, we've been around since 1858, um, intentionally smaller university. Um, you know, we have about a thousand total students, uh, anywhere from four to 500 traditional undergrads each, each year, depending on the year. Um, but we, we do that intentionally so that we can really know our students and, and have relationships with them and be able to mentor them um, throughout their college years and not just treat them as another number or just even another student each of you know we, we feel like everybody's created uniquely in the image of God and so your education ought to be unique to you as well um, and being intentionally on the smaller side gives us the chance to do that um, so but we're, we're in northeast Missouri in Hannibal it's about 90 minutes north of St. Louis sitting right on the Mississippi River uh, gorgeous town um, fun fact Hannibal is the birthplace of Mark Twain. Um, so if you've ever read Tom Sawyer or Huck Finn um, and all the adventures that they have in the caves, if you come to Hannibal, Missouri, you can actually go tour those caves because there were actual caves that uh, Samuel Clemens, his pen name Mark Twain, played in as a boy, and those are what are reflected in the books. So it's about a five-minute drive from campus um, where you could go explore those caves. It's kind of fun. That's awesome. I remember reading those books growing up. Now you talk about help recruiting students, which is awesome because when I was first being homeschooled, you know, it was very difficult to get into college as a homeschooler because they didn't know what to do with us. But as they've kind of gotten used to us, now we're almost like a checkbox, like, you know, you get an extra point on your admission to get in. So tell me, why do uh, homeschoolers, uh, why, do you, why are you attracted to the homeschool student and why should homeschool students uh, look at your university? Yeah, well, we, we really love homeschool students here because what I've found, I've been in admissions at Christian higher ed institutions for about 10 years now. And then what I find is generally homeschool students come in much more prepared for college um, than what, what you might call traditional students. Um, homeschool students have learned to work. Um, they've learned how to work hard. They've learned how to ask good questions and dig for information instead of just having things handed to them. Um, so all of those skills are necessary skills for students in college uh, because you move from high school where you are kind of given a lot, where you move to college where you're expected to find a lot of information. You're expected to dig through and make connections of things that you're, you're presented and, and introduced to, but then you're expected to take the next step. And so homeschool students are, I have found way more prepared for that. Um, they, they tend to be uh, better question askers, harder workers, um, all of those things. Now, why a homeschool student might want to look at a, at a school like us, and especially a, a classical conversation student, um, you know, you've, your parents and you have invested in, in a Christian education, um, however long you've been a part of this, whether it's from kindergarten on, um, or just high school, or, or whatever point, but you've invested in that Christian education. And so what we're trying to do here is to be distinctively Christian um, in, our, in our education and, in our, and, and still in our students a Christian worldview. Um, so that that means that we're preparing them to look through the lens of faith at the world around them, uh, to look and be prepared to serve the Lord in whatever vocational, whatever uh, discipline, wherever they end up in the world, to be able to use that as a platform to serve the world. 
Um, and our, our core liberal arts curriculum is a strong body that's going to deepen um, what you've already been doing in the, in the classical conversations model to help develop critical thinking, uh, analytical skills, uh, good, good question asking, being, being intellectually hungry, um, those kind of things that you've already been doing, those are important to us. And we're going to help you deepen and broaden those skills uh, because that's what really in today's world, um, when we think about what comes next. So we're talking about going from homeschool, high school to college. We also have to kind of think about what comes after that as well, right? Which is mm -hmm. you launch into either graduate school or the workplace, which is, which is what we're doing is to prepare you for that. And that's what those, those graduate schools or employers are looking for, those, those critical thinking skills. They want people who, who know their craft, but, but know how to ask questions, know how to connect ideas um, to see how, you know, this works here and this works here and how do they go together and be able to make those connections without having to handhold them through. Um, and so for us, that's what, we're, that's what we're about is trying to help you broaden and depth and depth and deepen what you've been doing um, at the high school level. Um, and then for those students who are, who are gifted or who really want to be pushed, we have a fantastic honors uh, program and honors community where um, they can be challenged even more. Um, and, and one that's firmly rooted and committed to engaging students from a distinctively Christian perspective. That's great. I know to you just look at the world around us and everything going on, and it's always been so important for us to give our students a Christian worldview and help them understand and defend it. Um, yeah. But we can just see the negligence, really, of our country, and now we're reaping the, the, the payment of that uh, all around us. And so I definitely encourage everyone to look at Hannibal LaGrange University. Now, you have almost... 30, around 37 majors or so. What's, what are some of your popular uh, you know, courses of study? Uh, teacher ed is, is a really popular major with us. Nursing, um, Christian studies, and, and business are also, are also fairly popular. Um, we have a really, really strong communication program. Um, so, you know, we have 37 plus to choose from. Those are some of the top ones that I, that I hear often. Uh, but I'd put all of our programs up, up against anybody's because you're going to you're going to get one on one attention from your professors, from your faculty members that are going to help you you know, move forward in your education. Yeah. So you guys have roughly a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. And that's really impressive, um, especially because you guys are really affordable. Um, just twenty two thousand five hundred dollars a year in tuition is what I read on the website. Um, yes, sir. And 93% of people get financial aid is what you got to claim in. So tell us like what type of scholarships are available to students in general? And are there any particular ones that classical conversation students you think would be really good to apply for? Or how does that process work? Yeah. So we, we say 93% because we have some, some kind of ancillary programs. We have some graduate degrees. We have some adult degree completion. We, we actually have a, uh, an LPN program and those students don't, get scholarships because they're discounted on the front end. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we say 93%. But when we're talking about your students, like incoming freshmen or transfer students to the traditional undergrad program, 100% of them are going to receive some sort of financial aid from Hannibal LaGrange. So that's a key, that's kind of a key distinction to make there. Of when we're talking about your students, 100% of them are going to qualify. Um, and here's the really great thing about us. We love homeschool students so much that uh, we have what we call our Christian Heritage Scholarship. So anybody who's coming from a homeschool background, um, we guarantee that we're going to get you at least 50% tuition um, in a scholarship. So 50? 50. 50. Like five zero? Five zero. We're going to cover at least half of your tuition for you just because you're a homeschool student. What? Um, so now a lot of our students find, so we have that scholarship. It's called a Christian Heritage Scholarship, okay. and it's 50%. We right. find that a lot of our students don't actually take that one because our others get them above that uh, because they are well prepared. They're academically gifted um, or they just they've done well academically. So we're going to go with whichever one is in best for the student. If it's the heritage one where you get 50 percent tuition. Great. If you earn higher than that, we'll give you the others and let you have higher than that. That's great. Yeah, I know with college course college spiraling out of control. That's. That's awesome to see you guys keeping those 
prices low for families and making sure that you guys are affordable. Now, I understand obviously you guys are going to be taking safety measures this fall, but you're doing your best to meet in person. Um, it's just been wonderful to see all of these different universities say it's best to meet in person, but we also know that many are deciding to start online or maybe do the whole semester or whole year online. And of course, they're not given discounts on tuition. So are you able to transfer in if uh, at this point for this fall or is it too late? No, we, we are. We, as a matter of fact, our move-in day is August 20th. And okay. so we're a little less than a month away. And the first day of classes are August 24th. So we've still got about a month. Um, and and we, can, we can take students. We, we like to get them in before the first day of class. But, you know, if we're pushing and it's the second day of class, we'll catch you up. We'll work with you. Uh, but we can take students all the way through that. And we are. We're taking safety measures. We're, we're, we've got a whole plan up on our website. You could read about it. Uh, but we really, that that face-to-face -face community is really important to us. And personally, you know, online education is, is fine. It's good. I did, a, I did a graduate degree online completely. Um, and I think we figured out how to transfer knowledge really well online. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yep. we're figuring out how to engage well online. But that transformational education that happens in the community building face-to-face -face where you you come in with your level of faith and your level of, of knowledge and your emotional and spiritual development. And then through the face-to-face -face interactions and the community building that just grows deeper and wider. I don't know that we're going to figure out how to do that transformation piece online because there is just something God has built us to be in community with each other, right? He didn't build us to be, to do this all right. the time. Um, and so there's just a piece of that where you're in a room with someone and you're able to share ideas and talk back and forth and then pray with them or go eat lunch with them. You, you can't do that in the same way virtually. So we're, we're, it's really important for us that we want to be back together face to face. And we're doing everything we can to, to clean, to sanitize, to do social distancing. Uh, we're looking at our classroom spaces, all the things that we should be doing to keep everybody as safe as we can possibly keep them. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with agree with what you're saying. And you know, God created Adam, and then He created Eve because He knew that we needed that relationship and that person-to-person uh, -person interaction. So that's yeah. awesome. Now, I know you you mentioned uh, before our call that you're still taking students this year. So if you're a graduated senior and you haven't made your decision, or you made a decision and maybe that uh, university or school isn't really offering what you want anymore. You know, you can still apply, but for those who are rising juniors or sophomores, like what's the, what's the best process for someone who doesn't have a graduating senior, uh, but maybe has a high school student um, to get to know you guys um, and maybe visit the campus? Like what's that process look like to see if you're a good fit? Yeah, so I would tell you if you're going into your sophomore year, so the answer is kind of different sure. based on where you are. Freshman year, you should, you should kind of start paying attention a little bit sophomore year, I would tell you, start exploring some schools' websites and social media. Um, look for them on YouTube to see what kind of videos they have out there. That's a good way to kind of just get a feel for like, what are they doing? What, what's happening on campus? And you can kind of start to formulate a list um, of, of places you'd be interested in. And then you can sign up for information um, as early as you want to. So those schools that you look at their website, you look at their social media and you go, ah, that's kind of appealing. I'd like to check them out. Sign up and ask for information, and we will, we will send you, as an as a industry, higher ed, we will send you all the information that you want. Uh, you'll probably get more than you want, but that, that's our clue to you where you say, I want some information, we're going to send it to you. So as a sophomore, that's a good thing to start doing. Junior year, I'm going to tell you, that's the time to start doing some visit events. Um, so like we have Trojan Day, and we do three in the fall and three in the spring, and we're still working through maybe what those are going to look like this fall. Yeah. Um, but normally, you know, we have 50 to 100 students on campus and we let them interact with our current students. They go to class, they go eat in the cafeteria, we tour campus, big, big event, big day, lots of students. That's a great thing to do. It, you can do that your senior year as well. But if you're starting early, I would tell you those are great to do in your junior year so that in senior year, you can come do a one on one personal visit. And we'll tailor that visit to what you want to do. You can sit down with a faculty member. Uh, you can go see financial aid and sit down with them and talk through um, what all that looks like. 
So that's kind of the steps of exploring college. Now on the other end, for students, I would tell you your junior year, go ahead and start taking some of those tests, ACT, SAT, the CLT, um, which by the way, we take all three of those. Awesome. Uh, so I would take- I'm on the CLT board, so I'm glad you are taking it. It's a yeah, great test. We, we've been taking it for several years. Uh, so we, we, we like that and value it and appreciate it. So, but in your junior year, go ahead and start taking them. Take it multiple times. Uh, part of that is because the more familiarity you have with the, the flow and the rhythm of that, because it's totally different than what you do, right? You've got this huge bank of questions and small time frames to answer them. You got to get used to that rhythm of doing that. So the more you take it, the more familiar you are with the rhythm, the better you're going to perform. As a matter of fact, statistics show your, your best score is probably going to come on your fourth or fifth time. Um, so don't be afraid to take it multiple times. So start early. Um, and I would tell you to take a couple of them. Like if you're a classical conversation family, definitely take the CLT. But take the ACT or the SAT as well. You may find you do better on one than the other. Um, for, you know, non-homeschool students, we, we tell them often, take both the ACT and the SAT because you're probably going to do better on one than the other. And you'll know, I like this one better. I can, I'll take this one a few more times. And that, and that also shows the colleges. So for us, when a student starts talking about scholarships and affordability, and, and maybe they need a little bit of extra money to, to try to make it work, I'm going to look and go, how many times did they take the test? All right, you only took it once or twice. Hey, let's, let's have you take it again. Um, or they've taken it five, four, five, six times. All right, you're probably where you're going to land. Uh, the, the room for improvement is probably not going to be there. We can, you, you've shown effort. So it shows colleges like us and universities like us that you're putting forth the effort. You're, you're making that effort to do, to put your best foot forward. So start early in your junior year. Um, every school that's like us, we're going to take your best score. And as a matter of fact, starting this year, we're going to start super scoring um, because ACT made some changes and they're letting you take individual sections. So mm -hmm. we're going to do what's called a super score, meaning we'll take your best score from your best sections and make that your composite score. Um, and so we'll start doing that for admission and scholarship purposes. So yes. it does not hurt you to take it multiple times. We're going to take your best one. That's awesome. Yeah, I took the SAT freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, then twice my senior year trying to get scholarship money. So, um, and I'm, I'm practice, I practiced what I'm preaching. I took the ACT seven times um, trying to get a particular score for the university I was interested in. So I, I put forth that effort and it paid off. Good. Yep, I, I managed to sneak into the honors college and on, on my last test, so <laughs> that was good. Yes. All right. Well, Will, what, where's, what's your website again? Um, it's uh, hlg.edu. Okay. So, hlg.edu. Yes, sir. And then the the admissions page is there's some headers at the top. The admissions page is right there on the top. It'll take you to where you can find out all you want to know about admissions. Awesome. Well, if you're a homeschool family who is looking to send your kid to college, uh, check out this wonderful premier sponsor. Get a 50% uh, scholarship right off the bat just for your Christian heritage. That's, and it's already a super low price, very well affordable. It's going to really just look at what you've done as a family and continue that process for the next four years. Uh, it's a small school, about 1,000 students, over 37 majors, and uh, in beautiful Missouri near where Mark Twain uh well, I guess the real guy's name, what was the real guy's name? Samuel Clemens. Samuel Clemens was born, and so you can actually see some of those places that, that he wrote about. Um, so make sure you like this, share this, tell your friends who have challenged students um, about this video, because there's a lot of great information uh, just for what, what it, it looks like to be prepared for college and make sure that your student gets a scholarship, whether at Hannibal LaGrange or somewhere, somewhere else. This would be a great video to share with them. So thank you so much for your time, Will. Uh, thank you so much for your support of homeschooling families here in the United States and across the world uh, with y'all's premier sponsorship. I just want to say God bless to everybody and have a great day. Thank you.